In this video, I'll show you how to use keyframes in CapCut to make your videos look smooth and dynamic. And if you've never used keyframes before, don't worry. I'll explain it step by step and also use them on videos, text, audios, colors, and even many more. So without wasting your time, let's just get straight into it. So in this video, we'll start with applying keyframes on something called scale. Scale basically means the size of the video. Like I said, you can apply keyframes on anything, audio, size, whatever. So we'll start with scale. If you come down to, let's say, basics or whatever here, let me show you the size of the video. You can see that the video, pro okay, yes. If you go to transform right now, and we check advanced, we can increase the zoom, right? As you can see, you can see it's currently at 100. It fits perfectly, So, which means the scale is good. So what we want to do now is we'll use keyframes to increase and reduce the scale of the video over a duration of time. So this will apply to so many things. It's very simple. We have the keyframes logo you can see up here, this diamond shape. Just click on it. We are currently at 100. And we just play the video and we just make the change. So this is what the video says. In this video, I will show you how to make your videos look more cinematic. So at this point, when it gets to cinematic, we we'll just zoom in a bit. So I think we want the video to be just zoomed in. And if we come back to, let's say, our what's that one called? We we'll actually want to see what the size is. So if we come back to transform, and we'll check advance, and we'll go to zoom, you can see now in 140. So if you scroll back a bit, you can see how the size is reducing over time. So if I just play the video, you can see now from 100, it decreases. In this video, I'll show you how to make your videos look more cinematic. So you can see. Also, you can add multiple keyframes, not just one to one video. You can add as many as you want. So by the time it gets to this point, it says cinematic. And professional. The next thing I'll add another keyframes and I'll just move forward a bit. So remember, this keyframes here is 139, 140. The next one is also 140. So no change. But I just move forward a bit, then I'll bring it all the way back to 100. So I want a very, very sharp change. So I can either just use this or just use my two fingers on the actual video. So by the time we play the video now, you can see how fast it moves. In this video, I'll show you how to make your videos look more cinematic and professional using feed. You can see. So by the time it goes professional, professional. it had this using very feed. sharp um, reverse. So you can use keyframes for so many things. Let's say you want to like make emphasis on the things you are saying. You can use keyframes as like, as much as you want. I can still apply multiple keyframes. Even at this point, I can just come here again. Then to the end of the video, I can just, okay, you know what? Zoom in more. So you can see from here using filters and color grading in CapCut. So that's the first one for scale. That's how you apply keyframes for scale. Like I said, you can apply keyframes for everything and anything that can affect change. You can see we have the red sign here already, which means you have keyframes activated. Next thing is for volume. The volume is currently at 100. If you can, if, let me show you. So this is 100 in the middle. If I move here forward a bit, if I drag it forward, you can see we have another marker or another keyframe identified. And if I click on this diamond logo again, it takes it out. If I click on it, it activates, but I need to actually effect the change. So yeah. So now if I go from the beginning to this side, the volume increases. As you can see, the volume increases. If I go forward, I can even decide to even bring the volume all the way back down. So you can see volume goes up and comes back down. But yeah, that's not actually I don't want to affect the audio of this video, so I'll just undo that. I want the volume to remain the same. So yeah, that's also when it comes to applying um, keyframes on audio or your volume, basically. This is just specifically even for your volume. I'll still show you how to do for third-party audio and other things. So that's the first. So I've, I've spoken about scale. I've spoken about volume. Anything that can take change, you can use keyframes on it. You can apply keyframes on um, animations. Because they already have their own fixed timeline and how they work. So that wouldn't be allowed. But let's say for something like effects. Yes, if I bring in an effect, I can apply keyframes on effects. So let me bring in, let's say, a video effect. Mm, let's say, the yeah, blood. In this video. You can see now. So my video is blurred out, right? Oh, it applied directly on um this. I don't want that. Let me just click on effects here. And let me bring in yes, an effect from this area. And I just click you, on effects. So yeah, now I have my effects here. 
I can just click on adjust and I bring my effects down to zero. You I apply a keyframe, then I move forward a bit, then I bring it back all the way. So if you play the video, you can see. So that's just basically how it works. And it works for everything, anything, even effects, filters, whatever. So I've shown you how to apply for um the scale, audio, and even effects. Let me even go further. What else should we do? What else should we apply on? Body effects, everything. Like you can apply keyframes on it. Let's see. Um, even if you have an overlay, the same logic, simple. Yeah, for text, let's go next to text. Let me add a text. I'm gonna bring in my text and I'll type keyframe. The same thing works here. So let me just make it very easy to read. Let me fix the style. Let me just add um, let's say background, a black background, very simple, nothing too much. Yeah. Take out the corner radius, the height. Yeah, very simple and good. So we have keyframe right here. So this is how people make. So I'm gonna drag the text all the way down. So now this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm going to apply a keyframe here at this first point. And by the time I get to, let me say, this point, I want my text to be up here, but smaller. So if I'm to play the video now, I'll have this. In this video, I'll show you how to make your videos. So you can see that. Then after that one, I can say I, I, I want the text here. Then after that, I can say I want the text here. Then towards the end, I want the text down here. Then towards the end, I now want the text, uh, let's say, bigger up here. So if I play the video for you now, you see the effects I just made. It's just very simple. And you only need to just activate your keyframe once at the beginning. All the changes you start to implement afterwards, it, it gets automatically ticked or tracked. In this video, so I I'll video. show you how to make your videos look more cinematic and professional using filters and color grading in CapCut. Yeah, guys, that's how keyframe works. <laughs> very simple. This is just text right here. We've tried it on scale, we've tried it on um, effects, we've tried it on even text, we've used it on volume. So now, uh, what else should I try it on? As many stuff as possible, just to, yeah, adjust. In fact, let me, because we have two adjusts. Adjust that we can just bring underneath, like this one right here. It can be under, or the one we can actually just directly apply on the video. So I want to actually make the adjust to be directly on the video. It's basically the same thing anyways. The only difference between adjust on a video and adjust the same way we have blank keyframes underneath is we can drag it across multiple clips. So let's say we have like a second clip. This video, this um keyframe here can still go longer to, into a new clip. But if I'm applying adjust directly on this one, it only stays here. It doesn't go to the next clip. And that was the reason. I don't know if you remember the first blow effect I applied was directly on the video, but to bring it down. Because in case I want to just drag it to like other videos, so that's the that's the difference. But you know what? Let me just let me just bring in like you know what? an external adjust. And yeah, for the beginning, let's say I want my brightness to be all the way. Yep, brightness all the way. In and this video, gets here, I want the brightness. Oh, I, I I didn't actually mark a keyframe. I forgot. So yeah, at the beginning I'll mark keyframes. As you can see, I'm, I just checked my keyframe, got the, the diamond, the red logo there. So I want my brightness, in fact, all the way down. Then by the time it gets, let's say, forward in a bit, I want it normal. Yeah. Also, let me say from the beginning, I want it also to be white and black. So I come to saturation, I bring my saturation down. Then by the time it gets here, I want it to have a bit of color, which, which you can see. So you can see the, the movement from saturation, like, yeah. So keyframe applies to everything and anything. Opacity, everything and anything you can, you can apply keyframes to them. Just effects change. So it went from being white and black keyframe to being fully blood and yeah. You can see guys. What else should I apply keyframes on? What else should I apply keyframes on? Okay, let me bring in um audio. Let me bring in audio sound. Let me bring in sounds from CapCut. Let me just bring in this audio right here. Let's wait for it to load. So I'm going to apply keyframes. So I'm just going to bring this audio. Let me just trim it to this point. I'm going to trim it. So the similar thing I did, I'm just going to mistake right there, delete. I'm just going to apply 
keyframes on the audio. Basically, the volume, yeah, the volume. So I'm going to see the volume is currently at 100. I'm just going to apply keyframes right here. Let's start from zero. So it's just going to fade in. By the time we get here, it comes to 100. So you can also use keyframes for like manual fade in and fade out. So the volume goes in the studio. Up all the way up. Yeah, you can see. Then I can just let me see, bring it back to something reasonable, which is like 20 or 30. Yeah. So now it stays here all through until I effect another change. So that's one thing you guys also need to know. If you don't effect another change, your keyframe will just remain static. Keyframe works with changes. So it has to go from point A to point B. The parameters have to always change. So the first keyframe, this is the parameter, zero. The second keyframe, the parameter is 100. The third one, go back to 20. It works with changes, but afterwards, there are no change, so it just stays the same. So as you can see right here, then by the time we now finally get towards the end, I plan a new keyframe to mark that, and towards the end, I just bring it back to zero. So at this point, it fades out. Yeah. You've made it this far, so don't just stop here. Continue with this playlist and learn as much as possible about CatCut, or check out all our interesting videos on this channel, and I'll see you in the next one.